Hello everybody and welcome to Aztec, the Azure Technology YouTube channel. My name is Neil Millington and I'm a cloud solution architect for Microsoft. This video is going to be talking about SQL Server and in particular the implementation of something called Polybase within SQL Server. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about Polybase in the context of um, an ETL ELT performance scenario. ETL is extract, transform and load. ELT is extract, load and transform. And basically the, both those acronyms refer to uh, various ways of bulk loading data into your environment for subsequent processing or um, analysis. And this short video is going to be uh, pitched at a level 300. Um, that's using the Microsoft uh, qualification for training. There are four levels, level 100 through to 400, as you can see here. We're pitching at a level 300. And that assumes you have some sort of knowledge of or understanding of the, uh, maybe not Polybase in particular, because that's what we're talking about, but certainly about some of the tools or acronyms I will be referring to during the course of this video. Some of our prerequisites are I need you to have an understanding of database uh, principles and objects, uh, particularly concerning uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, it's good if you're actually familiar with that environment and have used it. Um, you'll also need to have a basic uh, understanding of the SQL transact SQL knowledge itself. Uh, so, for example, um, selects and inserts. Um, and I'll need, also need you to understand uh, the idea of file handling. So manipulating flat files, uh, uh, maybe importing them. Um, the tools we're going to be using during this video are uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to be using SQL Server itself. I'm using the 2017 um, release of SQL Server. You can use 2016. I'm using 2017 because it's the one available to me. And you will also need, um, as a management interface tool set, uh, you'll either need uh, SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS, or the newer SQL Operations Studio. So, what is Polybase? Um, this slide is basically a very high level summary and there's a nice graphical representation of it. So basically Polybase uh, permits access of data outside of your database environment and it's based on the um, Transact T-SQL language. Um, so in terms of SQL Server, it allows you to run queries on external data which could be held with, uh, for example, in a, a uh, Hadoop environment or it allows you to import export data from, uh, for example, blob storage. If you're uh, outside the remit of this video, but if you're using a SQL Data Warehouse, you can also um, access Azure Data Lake, for example. Um, there are a couple of other features of Polybase, which I'll touch on towards the end of this video. But in a nutshell, um, what I'm going to be showing you momentarily is how to use Polybase to basically uh, access large external uh, data sources. So in this case, it's going to be a flat file and then import that into SQL. And we're going to have a, there's a little bit of a comparison to show you how performant Polybase can be. So we'll jump over to my SQL Server environment here. And all we've got here is a pretty straightforward file. So I've got a demonstration database SQL demo, and I have a table in here, table to process Polybase. And this is going to be the target table for our flat file import. So pretty basic structure here, as you can see, they're just all standard 255 columns. So this is literally acting as a straight um, load import table for subsequent downstream processing. Jumping over to the SQL itself, um, Polybase, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, is a feature of SQL Server. Um, it's not enabled by default out of the box on a SQL installation, so you do actually have to enable that. And the way to check for that is you run this uh, select server property is Polybase installed. Um, and if I just run that, basically it will query the SQL system tables. And you can see here it's returned a 1, which means true. So Polybase, obviously, for this demonstration is uh, installed um, as part of my SQL Server environment. Um, if it's not installed, you'll access that via your install media. Um, and then you can add that feature in. Similar if you were you know, adding in other features uh, on an existing SQL Server install, Polybase is one of the features which you can access uh, uh, simplistically as a checkbox option. Um, what you then need to do is once your Polybase is actually installed, you actually need to configure how the um, what degree or what level of connectivity you're going to be using. And I have a little summary of the list here. So there are seven um, 
there are seven main connection types uh, and I'm going to be using for the purpose of this demonstration option 4 which is going to be for Azure blob storage um, and I will basically just jump through to my portal here to show you what I have so I close this down so here's the Aztec uh, subscription and I've got a, a resource group here with our demonstration. As you can see, I've got a storage account called Demo for All. So if I just uh, click through to that, um, you see here we have the Storage Explorer. So this is just basically a standard blob storage um, that I've created for this demonstration. And if I go through to the Storage Explorer, which is also available uh, as a free download that you can install on your desktop, uh, similar to Windows Explorer. Um, I'm actually going to run the preview through the Azure portal here and as you can see I've got a blob container called CSV. If I click on that CSV, this is the file we're going to be using for this demonstration, table to processcsv um, and it's basically you can see here the content type is text CSV and the file is just as you can see just here is just short of 600 megs in size and I do happen to know that equates to for this demonstration that equates to approximately a 5 million row file um, so the way let's get back to polybase so you configure my in this case my connectivity to config value of 4 so SP configure the configuration name itself is Hadoop Connectivity and the config value is 4, which is blob storage. I've actually already run that in this environment, so I won't run it now. On your own environment, you can then push that through with a reconfigure or a reconfigure with override. And that would be should be your polybase installed and configured ready to run. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use, as I, as I mentioned already, we're just going to use a straight um, uh, flat file a straight flat text file that is and the way we do that is uh, as with other features uh, with uh, SQL Server when you're using encryption you need to create a master key I already have a master key created on this environment so I won't be running this command but this is the syntax that you, do, you would actually use to create your own so create master key encryption and you specify a password there and you run that through and then the next step is you then create a credential. So similarly, if you're familiar with SQL Server, you'll probably appreciate that you can use, uh, you need credentials to uh, access various resources. And it's exactly the same for Polybase. So we need to create a credential here. And this is the syntax command that you, you would use to do that. Um, so create database uh, credential, and then just standard credential name, which I'm gonna call PB credential here. And then the two things here, which are the two um, rows here, are specific to um, creating a credential for blob storage. Uh, and my identity is a shared access signature, which is basically effectively the key through to my Azure blob storage. And this is actually that key value there. Uh, so I'm creating a database credential called PB credential. It's got a shared access, access signature. This is my actual access key for the storage. So I'll run that through now. And that's run OK. And then the next and actually final step is you then create the external data source. And the external data source effectively points you to uh, the file and it uses the credential that we've already created. So syntax for that is create external data source. I'm going to call my data source ELT underscore CSV. And then you basically specify some of the um, parameters for that. So with, so the type of data source we're going to be accessing is blob storage, obviously. Uh, and the location is, if you remember back from my Azure portal, so the actual blob storage is called demo for all. So this is the location of that. And the credential we're going to be using inside this ELT CSV data source is the PB credential that we just created here. So if I now run that into my SQL environment, and as you can see, that's gone through OK. And that's basically it. Um, install poly Polybase. Um, configure the connectivity type, i.e. what your Polybase is going to be talking to, whether it's Hadoop, um, if you're in warehousing environment, um, Azure Data Lake, or in this case, I'm using Blob Storage. You create a master key, you create a credential, 
and then you then create a data source which actually uses that credential. So now I've got here, I've got a little bit of SQL, which I'm just going to run to show you Polybase in action. And as I mentioned earlier on, I've got a temporary table. So just to show you that my table to process underscore Polybase should be empty, and it is, there's no rows in there. And what I've also done for the purpose of this demonstration is I've created a logging table. And the reason I've done that is literally I just uh, create a timestamp when the, a job starts and a timestamp when a job finishes, just so we can see you know, effectively how long the job took to run. But the other reason I'm showing you this, as you can see in here, I already have two entries and I have, um, as part of this and other demonstrations, um, just a regular sys package that imports the very same file. And as you can see here from these two timestamp values, it literally started just when I when I originally ran this. It ran at uh, started at just before 10 past 10, and finished just before 12 minutes past 10. So roughly, that sys package takes approximately two minutes to run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to run uh, using a Polybase. Um, uh, data source through to the same file. I'm going to obviously import that using Polybase. So what I'm doing here with my code is I create a timestamp entry saying start Polybase when so the job ran. And at the end of it, I create another timestamp entry for when the Polybase job stopped. And basically in between that is the actual command to bring in the data to um, import the data into my SQL environment. So what I'm going to be doing is using the bulk insert command, which you may already be familiar with. And I'm going to bulk, bulk insert into this table to process polybase uh, import table I have here. Um, basically, I'm ex inserting that or I'm bringing that in from, and here's the relative path. So in our credential, we actually basically say what the blob storage is called and the path to that. But as you can see here, I also have a subfolder um, which is called CSV, uh, and there is the actual file. If you remember when we went through the Storage Explorer uh, on my portal, um, we had a CSV folder container, and then the actual file was sitting inside that, and that's where we define that here in the from clause. And again, we actually basically need to tell it, uh, we need to tell SQL and Polybase uh, what, what is the structure of the, the, the data we're accessing, and, and you do that here using the with clause. So we're basically going to be using uh, with the data source ELT CSV, which is what we created up here. And we also tell it what the format of the file. So we're using a, st a standard CSV file where the field terminator is slash T. Uh, for, you, sh you should be familiar with this, but basically slash T um, SQL Server refers to a tab delimited file. Uh, I've also specified the code page. You won't touch on that for now. And I've also specified tab lock. So that will allow SQL Server to lock the table for performance reasons. Um, so my, given it's a load table, it's got zero rows. No one else will be accessing that table. So I just do a table lock to bring in all 5 million rows. And then, as I mentioned, I have a little command to basically timestamp when the job's finished. So if I highlight all of that and set it running, and as you can see, the, down here, the query is executing fine. We'll just let that run. And then I'll run the same commands, the select count from the table, just to prove it has actually run in the background. This is a, a real demonstration. And then also to show you the timestamp as well. So this will uh, shouldn't take much for longer to run. And there you go, as you can see. So basically the polybase task has now completed. So as I mentioned, there's the 5 million rows it's imported. And you can see down at here, down at the bottom, it's basically took approximately 27 seconds, but we can confirm that here with the same two commands. So select count from our table, and it's basically selling, I've run the job a few times, so I've actually got 20 million rows in here. Um, I'll tell a lie, I've actually referred to the wrong table. So let me just correct that. So our polybase table, as we'd expect, has the 5 million rows in it. And then let's select from our logging table. So as you can see, we, here's the two um, entries from the sys package, and here's the two entries for our polybase. And basically, if you look at those timestamps there, that will confirm that's taken approximately 27 seconds to run. So the idea is a very uh, short, um, 
and very short uh, demonstration, but the idea there is to show you the performance you can get from Polybase, and that's actually a relatively small file. It's only 600 megs, and it equates to 5 million rows. But as you can see there, um, just even on that small file, there's there's a huge um, increase in performance versus a sys package. Sys package takes two minutes, Polybase is taking give or take 30 seconds. And there's one more thing I wanted to touch on with Polybase as well. Um, so there's another nice feature of Polybase, um, and you can have this thing called scale out groups. So if you're in a large warehousing, a large uh, big data environment where you've got a, a number of files or a, a number of uh, significantly large files, basically Polybase has this really clever little idea where it allows you to scale out to further enhance its performance. And basically you can create uh, effectively a cluster um, uh, using Polybase. So effectively what you do is um, you basically add um, nodes into your Polybase configuration. And as with, uh, for example, a Hadoop cluster, you effectively have a head node, a controller node, and then a number of compute nodes. Um, so I'm not going to talk about that too much in this video, but I'll give you the idea of Polybase is very performant, and you can actually also further enhance that using this um, scale out uh, technology scale out feature. So here's some useful links for you. Um, the Polybase guide you can find at that link there, and that'll give you um, a summary of Polybase, and it actually also has that graphic in which I had at the start of this video, if you recall. Um, and then the SQL commands I used in that demonstration you can find through the next link. I, as you can see there, it says Polybase T SQL objects. Um, that link there will actually have the T-SQL commands that we use during our demonstration. And similarly, contact me. I'm always happy to help. Um, if you need a little bit of help with your syntax or in particular around setting up your credentials, uh, your shared access keys through to your storage, or if you're using Polybase to say in, in your data warehouse, uh, whereas I've used uh, simplistically talked about SQL here, you, if you want to try and use Polybase from a warehouse and you're having any problems, get in touch with me, happy to help. So Twitter is underscore Neil Millington. Uh, or you can also find me on LinkedIn, uh, and there I am there. So LinkedIn, Neil Millington, uh, as all one block. Thank you for your time. Um, please uh, take a look in Aztec uh, as your technology channel for uh, some of my other videos. Talk to you again. Thank you.